Hey everybody, this is Jen with Genco Designs, and today I'm going to show you how I uh, made this illustration that I'm going to call like comic text. Okay, so first we'll get started. I have another drawing set up here so we can get started right away. To start, we're going to do a background, so just uh, click and drag a rectangle over. We're going to use this blue color here. Okay, and now um, next. You'll notice I'm going to keep going back to the originals as we go along. Uh, there's what I call comic dots, and then we have these splash objects, and then the text on top of that. Okay? So I've created the comic dots, um, and I just bring those over from my asset panel, and we're going to make those a bright yellow color. All right, so now we have the dots on there. So now we need to create the splash object. To do that, we're going to go to our um, tool panel on the left-hand side, select the double star tool, and then click and drag it on to your illustration. Okay, and then I select V on my keyboard to get my uh, selector uh, back. And we're going to, just for right now, place that in the center. I want to show you. Now, if you'll notice in when you use the shapes from the, um, the shape tool, the only way that you can modify these is with the bounding box the way that they are. Okay, to be able to uh, modify them more, you need to come up to your context toolbar across the top and select convert to curves. And what that does, if you come over and grab your node tool off your tool panel there, it gives you the nodes uh, as if. Uh, turning it into a, a specific vector object so that you can actually modify all the points. And if you come up here, it shows you the different points right here of a vector object. The uh, square, like these, are pointed, sharp corners. These are round corners, creating a bezier curve. I'm not exactly sure how to say that. It's a French word. And then this last one is creating a uh, smart curves. Okay, so we want to just create the round ones. And we'll go ahead and do that to all of these nodes around the inside of our, uh, what I call a splash object. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then duplicate it and I'll show you what that looks like. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, created the different uh, layers for the splash object. Okay, so I just created the one, then I did a, a copy and paste, and I made the uh, black one. Uh, they're in order over here in the layers panel, the pink on top, then black, then white. Um, and the way I organize these is to take the pink one, and the points should um, line up pretty much center with the black one. And then the white one sits below it, and it does not point out the top, just out of the bottom to give it more of a three-dimensional look. Okay, so that's how I did the splash object. We want to be able to modify the, the individual letters of this text, so we need to, be, to convert it to curves so it creates each letter as an individual object. Okay, so we'll go back up to convert to curves, which is now moved clear over here with all the other tools on this toolbar. And you'll notice in the layers panel over here, it's created a different layer for each letter. Okay, and that's what we wanted. Now what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and use the, the letters that I've already created for this. Okay, so I've duplicated all the uh, lettering. And there was one thing I wanted to point out. Before you duplicate your letters, if you decide, and, and I did with mine a little bit, I wanted to get that back in the center here. I wanted to, uh, I like to adjust my lettering just a little bit. Okay, so take the M for example, and I, when it's in the node, um, when you're using your node tool, I adjusted this. Okay, so this is not just the standard way the font comes out. I like to adjust mine a little bit. I adjusted these, uh, the G as well. And, um, I do that just so that the, the text looks a little bit unique in each one of my illustrations. So you can do that, and it's best to do it before you duplicate the letters. Okay, so I did forget to mention that before we uh, duplicated the letters. But here we are. We have all the lettering here. We have it duplicated. 
and I have kind of placed it already. Um, what I'd like to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you how to um, correct this issue here where the pink layer is outside of the splash is over here and over here. There's a little trick for that. Uh, we're going to create, I'll go back to the original here. So we're going to uh, fix this and then we're going to add some shading here that will make this M pop out. We need to add an outline for our lettering, okay? I just highlighted uh, the yellow layer of each uh, letter element and come down to your effects panel which is the FX, the bottom of your layers, layer panel and just did the outline and I did a, a 9.5 okay and so I went ahead and did that for all of the um, the text okay so now we're going to do the shade element that's going to go on the side of the M's on this side and on this side we're going to do that with uh, a rectangle so select the rectangle tool click and drag a rectangle that should be about the right size and now on your layers panel you're going to uh, click and drag that layer that rectangle layer down on top of the O and you want to put it just right there now see the pink line goes from right here all the way to the end of that box that's what you want okay so now it becomes part of the O see and uh, in your illustration, let me uh, select B to get my cursor back. In your illustration now, it actually sits inside the O. Okay, so we can move that over and it will just shade part of the O, create shade for part of the O, like that. We want to do that again and do it for the G, so we'll click one over here and create another one. This one we want to bring in to the G. So we'll bring it down. Again, watch that pink line underneath here. And that tells you that it went inside the letter G. And this one we need to, I'm going to get my selector back here. This one we need to angle so that it matches the M. So you just adjust it a little bit like that and there you go. Okay, so now we just created the shadow for that. Okay, so now we're going to do the final touches which is to correct this um, where the pink has uh, gone outside of the splash element. Okay, we're going to use the same technique that we used to create the shading for the letter M. So we're going to go into our letter O and there's our pink shadow of the O and we want to drag that down so that it becomes part of the hot pink splash element so we're just going to drag it down and let it sit under there and do you see how what it did here I'm going to turn off um, Let's turn off this one and this one to show you. See what it, um, it made the shadow, the pink O, part of the hot pink element. I guess is the easiest way to say that. And we're going to do the same for the dot. Okay. Come down for the dot and you can just drag it, click and uh, uh, select it and then drag it all the way down and make sure you get it underneath that uh, pink element and it does the same thing okay and that is how I um, looks like we could use it on the exclamation point as well so we'll do that one as well drag it down here and so now under the pink uh, splash element you notice it has these elements because they became a part of uh, the uh, the pink splash element. And that is how I created this uh, illustration. I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you had some uh, fun watching my video. Um, if you learned something, if you enjoy my videos, please uh, hit the subscribe button. It really does make a difference. Like it, share it with your friends. Um, I have a lot of videos to come. I'm really enjoying this. I thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and watching my videos. Have a great day and happy creating.